church. Good morning, church. It can be better. Good morning, church. Praise the Lord. What a beautiful Sunday morning. Can you hear me well? Amen. Praise Jesus. Yeah, and uh, very briefly this morning, uh, I'll be sharing the Word of God with you. Um, but I also wanted to quickly say thank you to Pastor Jern and the leadership of the church. It's always a privilege. I didn't take it for granted to be hacked upon to share the Word of God with the church. Amen. And what a Sunday to be speaking. It's Mother's Day. Yeah, it is Mother's Day. Uh, let me also, because I've got the mic, let me also seize the opportunity to celebrate my wife, my beautiful wife, uh, and the mother of our kids. Uh, I really wanted to thank God for the gift of her. And also my mom, who she's thousands of miles away. I really wanted to thank God for her life. She's such a powerful, strong woman of God. And to all the amazing ladies and women in the church today, can I please ask that all the men should stand up, if you don't mind, and the women sitting down, the ladies sitting down, and the men standing up, please? Yeah, yeah, please, let's, uh, and let's just celebrate these beautiful ladies. Let's celebrate them. <laughs> happy, happy Mother's Day. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. You can have your seat. Um, very briefly this morning some 10, 15 minutes. I'm going to share the word of God with us this morning. Uh, but before we do that, uh, I'd like for us to just uh, sing one or two songs together uh, to worship God. Amen. Um, mm, hallelujah. Steadfast law of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. New Every morning, thank you, Jesus. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. They are new every morning, yes, Jesus. New every morning, oh, great is the faithfulness, oh, Lord, oh, great is thy faithfulness. I wanted to be in the mood of worship. Just reflect and worship God as you're seated in your own way. You can sing your own song to him, reflect, speak to him in your own way. You can sing in your heart, just reflect how God is awesome. How mm -hmm. oh, excellent is your name, how oh, excellent is your name, O oh, Lord. How excellent is your name, O oh Lord. How excellent, how excellent is your name, O oh Lord. How excellent, how excellent is your name. How excellent is your name, O oh Jesus. 
How excellent is your name, O Lord, how beautiful, how beautiful is your name, how beautiful is your name, O how beautiful is your name, O Lord. There's no other name like the name of Jesus. How beautiful is your name, oh how beautiful is your name, how beautiful is your name, oh Lord, how glorious, how glorious is your name, how glorious is your name, oh how glorious is your name, oh Lord. Bless Jesus. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control of every situation that has troubled my mind. Release it to Jesus this morning. All my cares and burdens unto you I roll. Sing Jesus, 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 oh Jesus. Sing Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, oh Jesus, hallelujah, what a joy to be in God's presence this morning, amen. Um, this morning, like I said, uh, I'll be sp- Hello. Maybe it's this one. Shall I put this behind me? Yeah, let's try that. Hey, man. Excuse me. Just going to sip some water. Praise Jesus. Yeah, so this, as I was prepping for my message this morning, um, about two weeks ago, or three weeks ago, when Pastor John told me that I'll be speaking today, uh, I think for the past two weeks I've been, for the most part, kind of like up and down, and I didn't really get a lot of time to really think about what I'm going to speak about today. And just last week, I think precisely last week, Saturday, I was at home and I was studying and praying that God, you need to give me a word for your people today. And uh, a lot of, you know, messages flashed through my mind, things that I could speak about, and I had trouble deciding on what exactly to speak about. So I had different things coming through my mind. And I remember Jan reaching out to me during the week and was like, hey, what's your which is the topic of your message. And I was so honest. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, I had a lot of things in my mind another time. I think that was Wednesday or Tuesday. I hadn't made up my mind what exactly I was going to speak about today. And uh, I was in Walmart yesterday, and I ran into Dr. Rob. And we were just chatting. It's kind of like, hey, what are you going to speak about? I'm like, uh, I had this idea, this idea, and say, ah, how about this one? I'm like, yeah, I was thinking about that too. And I got home, and my wife too asked me, oh, so your message tomorrow, what is it about? <laughs> <laughs> and, and in that moment, she said something, and it kind of like just confirmed what the Holy Spirit has laid on my heart. 
Amen. So this morning, we're going to be at Mother's Day. So what a time to, you know, look into the scripture and look at the life of some amazing women of, women of God. And this morning, I'm going to be sharing with you a very common story of a very important character in the Bible and a woman of God, Deborah. And we're going to be looking uh, together at the story in the book of Judges, chapter 4 from verses 1 to 21. Amen. And if you have your Bibles, I think it's going to be on the screen. Actually, if I can ask that we please stand as we read the Word of God together. Thank you. So we're going to be reading from the book of Judges, chapter 1, and we're going to take it almost to the end. We're going to stop at verse 21 just so we get a very good context of the story. Uh, I'm going to count one, two, and we can go one, two. Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, now that he was dead. So the Lord sold them into the hands of Jabin, king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. Sisera, the commander of his army, was based in Harosheth, Hakogim, because he had 900 chariots, fitted with iron and had cruelly oppressed the Israelites for 20 years. They cried to the Lord for help. Now Deborah, a prophet, the wife of Labidoth, was leading Israel at that time. She held court under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites went up to her and have their disputes decided. She sent for Barak, son of Habinoim, from Kedesh in Naphtali, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go, take with you 10,000 men of Naphtali and Zebulun, and lead them up to Mount Tabor. I will lead Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, with his chariot and his troops, to the Kishon River, and give him into your hands. Barak said to her, If you go with me, I will go. But if you don't go with me, I won't go. Suddenly I will go with you, said Deborah. But because of the course you are taking, the honor will not be yours. For the Lord will deliver Sisera into the hands of a woman. So Deborah went with Barak to Kedesh. There Barak summoned Zebulon and Naphtali, and 10,000 men were Deborah also went up with him. Now Heba the Kenite had left the other Kenite, the descendant of Hobab, Moses' brother-in-law, and pitched his tent by the great tree in Zanim, near Kedesh. When they told Sisera that Barak, son of Habinoam, had gone up to Mount Tabor, Sisera summoned from Harosheth, Hagoim, to the Kishon River. All his men and his 900 chariots fitted with iron. Then Deborah said to Barak, Go, this is the day the Lord has given to Sarah into your hands. Has not the Lord gone ahead of you? So Barak went down to Mount Tabor with 10,000 men following him at Barak's advance. The Lord routed Sisera and all his chariots and army by the sword. And Sisera got down from his chariot and fled on foot. Barak pursued the chariots and Hami as far as Harosheth, Hagoim, and all Sisera's troops fell by the sword. Not a man was left. Sisera, meanwhile, fled on foot to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber, the Kenite, because there was an alliance between Jabin, king of Azor, and the family of Eber, the Kenite. Jael went out to meet Sisera and said to him, Come, my lord, come right in. Don't be afraid. So he entered our tent, and she covered him with a blanket. I'm thirsty, he said. Please give me some water. She opened a skin of milk, gave him a drink, and covered him up. Stand in the doorway of the tent, he told her. If someone comes by and asks you, Is anyone in there? Say no. But Jael, Heber's wife, picked up a tent peg and a hammer and went quietly to him while he lay fast asleep. Exhausted, she drove the peg through his temple into the ground, and he died. 
Thank you for reading with me. Spirit of a living God, we ask that you will follow fresh on us. The Bible says that the entrance of your word gives light and understanding unto the simple. Lord, we ask this morning that as your word go forth, let it dispel darkness in our lives. Lord, we ask, Lord, that your word will give someone an instruction today. Somebody is in service today, somebody is seated here today and confused about a situation in their lives. They don't know what next to do. Lord, we ask that as your word go forth, let there be direction. Let someone's life be transformed. Let someone hear your voice clearly. Let somebody know the next move to make and let your name be glorified. And Jesus, I hide myself behind the cross and I ask, Lord, that your people will not hear me speak to them, but they will hear you speak to them. And that you anoint my lips like a pen in the hands of a ready writer. And let the words that I speak henceforth come out with power and precision. And let the needs of everyone under the sound of my voice be met. And let Jesus be glorified. And let Jesus be glorified. And let Jesus be glorified. We give you praise, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. For some reason, I've got a dry throat, so you're going to see me sipping water quite often. Amen. Yeah, so this is um, an interesting story uh, of a powerful woman of God in the Bible. Um, it's very interesting to know that God is very concerned about justice, uh, not even just in this our contemporary war, but way back into the days of the Bible. And, you know, as God used a lot of men in, in the days of the Bible, God used a lot of women as well. And a very good example um, is Deborah. And that's why I, I chose to speak uh, on this topic today. And I know that God is speaking to someone and will be speaking to someone here today. Amen. Yeah. Each time I look at the story, I'm always amazed, uh, you know, with the uncommon faith, the courage, you know, showed by, by this great woman of God. And when we look back into the story, it's, it's very interesting because it's a story of two women, actually, and we hardly talk about these women. Um, this is a story of a woman who led the children of Israel to win a battle uh, against their enemy with 900 chariots. But often than not, we talk about Moses who defeated 600 chariots. But we hardly touch on Deborah who defeated 900 chariots. In the story, there are actually two women, and the, at, the, at the tail end of the story uh, from verse 17, we see this woman who just came up, uh, Jehel. But we hardly talk about her as well. You know, here is Deborah, you know, someone called by God at a very challenging time uh, in the history of Israel, but she responded to God quietly. Uh, when I look at her, I think Deborah represents a very, um, I'll put it like, a very contemporary woman today. She's a prophetess, she's a judge in Israel, and she's also a wife. So those are kind of like the three ministries that most women would usually have. A wife, she's got the courage and the anointing to lead to judge Israel, not just the community, the whole of Israel. She's a leader, she's a judge, yet humble to follow as a wife. Praise God. She has a pleasing church as a prophetess, a professional, if you like, a judge, and also a wife. Praise God. So when, when we look at this story, I think this is, you know, one woman that um, I think that we can learn a lot when we try to look into our life. A lot of leadership uh, traits in the life of Deborah. And I think, you know, trying to look into it, especially on a day like this, I think it's, um, it's nice to look at stories like that on a day like this. Um, and as we try to exegete this text today, 
um, I want us to put in perspective, speak particularly to the courage displayed by Deborah. Amen. Um, I think Deborah also reflected many leadership qualities and traits. Uh, if you remember the story, the woman in Proverbs 31, uh, I think Deborah is an example of a Proverbs 31 woman. Um, she's, you know, courageous, faithful. Uh, people trusted her. She supported our community. And I think those are the kind of traits that Christian women should, um, you know, she want that we should, uh, we should see more in Christian women. Praise God. Uh, let's go to the story. So this is a story that a lot of us are very familiar with. Um, the children of Israel has been oppressed for 20 years, and God spoke to her, spoke to Deborah about how they're going to win the war and how to uh, appoint Barak as the leader of the army to go against the Canaanite. Amen. Can I have the first slide on the screen, please? So I'm just going to speak very briefly to, I'll say some five, six, depending on how time permits, uh, from that same chapter. Um, I'll say like five traits of leadership that I see in that uh, passage that we just read. Uh, number one is courage. And I titled my message today, Courage in Battle. Courage in battle. I think Deborah displayed was very courageous. Uh, if we look at verses one to four, she was called by God to lead at a very difficult time in Israel. This is at a time that Israel has been oppressed for about 20 years. And God has spoken to Deborah on what to do to lead them out of bondage. Uh, Deborah also, you know, she served our people with wisdom and knowledge. In verses 4 to 5, she exhibited great listening skills. Uh, people would go to her and she would um, settle dispute. So she, she charged them with a lot of wisdom and, and knowledge. So Deborah is someone that has a lot of wisdom and knowledge. Um, if we also go further down in the story, I think from verse 6 and 7, she supported the people God called to lead, called her to lead. Uh, she encouraged Barak, uh, if you look at verse 6, uh, and acknowledged his role in leading the Israelites to victory. Uh, if we go to verse 6, yeah, she sent for Barak, son of Habinom, from Kedesh in Naphtali, and said to him, the Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, go with you 10,000 men of Naphtali and Zebulun and lead them onto Mount Tabor. So we can go on. Um, I also have in my notes here that Deborah was trusted. Uh, if we read down to verse A, she earned a position due to her belief and faith in God. A strong faith earned her the respect of the people, which allowed her to influence and motivate Barak in, in, the, in this particular verse. Uh, Deborah was also very direct. Uh, if we go to verse 9, she says, Suddenly I will go with you. She said exactly how God has spoken to her, said Deborah. But because of the course you are taking, the honor will not be yours, for the Lord will deliver Sisera into, your hand, into the hands of a woman. So Deborah went with Barak to Kedesh. Uh, I'm going to pause there a little bit and just to uh, speak a little bit about verse 8. So Barak said to her, if you go with me, I will go. But if you don't go with me, I will go. Um, and this is very interesting. When I, when I was studying, when I got to that point, I paused. And, uh, you know, many times God would give us instruction and God would say things to us. Uh, this is Barak that God has, you know, sent his word to Barak and, and said that he should go against the army of um, Sisera. But obviously, he was afraid. And Barak said to Deborah, if you don't go with me, I won't go. You know, a lot of times, God puts things on our heart. It would prompt us to do things, and then we hear clearly from God, but we're still, we cave in, we, you know, we shy away, or we go to man and try to seek validation from man when God has directly spoken, direct expressly to us. 
You know, this is a very clear case of, I'm afraid, I don't think I can do it, when the Lord has spoken. And what did Deborah do? Deborah said to him, suddenly I will go with you, said Deborah, but because of this course you are taking, the honor will not be yours, for the Lord will deliver Sisera into the hands of a woman. When I read that part, I actually thought that she was referring to herself. I didn't know there was another woman coming down the story jail. Yeah. And because she did, um, Barak, he did not obey, he wasn't going to get the glory for the battle. You know, when I got to that point, I paused and I remember the story of the children of Israel, too, I think in Numbers 13. 30, when Moses said to them, go up the hill and and spy the land, after God had brought them out of Egypt. And they came back to Moses and said to him, like, we were but like grasshoppers in their eyes. You know, and because of that disobedience and a lot of other things that followed, they murmured against God, they didn't enter the promised land. So often than not, a lot of times God is speaking to us, God is, you know, putting some things on our hearts, you know, nudging us, do something, but we're still, you know, looking for validation from people. We're still trying to get consent from people. We're still trying to get approval from people. Whereas we should actually take the word and run with it. But because Barak despised and did not believe, he wasn't going to get the glory. And she said to him, because of the course you're taking, the honor will not be yours, for the Lord will deliver Sisera into the hands of a woman. So Deborah went with Barak to Kedesh, and then we went on and went on as they attacked uh, the army of the Canaanite uh, led, by, uh, the, uh, led by Sisera. And it got to a point that the other guys were losing out. They were losing out, and the leader of the army, who is Sisera, had to get off his chariot and had to run because it was, they were losing the battle. And when we get to verse 17, if we can go a little bit down, and this is where it's interesting, the other part and where Jael comes into the story. And from verse 17, we will see that Sisera meanwhile fled on foot to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heba, the Kenite, because there was an alliance between Jabin, king of Azor, and the family of Heba, the Kenite. Jael went to meet Sisera and said to him, Come, my lord, come right in. Don't be afraid. So he entered her tent, and she covered him with a blanket. I'm thirsty. He said he was thirsty. She didn't only give him water. She gave him milk. She was super kind to him. She was super nice to him. But there was a plan. There was a plan. Yeah. And covered him up. Standing in the doorway of the tent, he told her, if someone comes by and asks you, is anyone in there, say no. But Jael, Eber's wife, picked up a tent peg and a hammer and went quietly to him while he lay fast asleep, exhausted. She drove the peg through the temple into the ground and it died. Now, this is... Obviously, Jehel that Deborah was speaking about, that the Lord would deliver Sisera into the hands of a woman and not Barak, because Barak did not obey God's instruction. You know, you, could, you, could, you can look at the story and say, oh, that's treacherous. You know, you allow this guy to come into your bosom, you treated him nicely, and all of a sudden, you, you turned around, and while he was fast asleep, you... And he, you used the peg of a tent and run it through his head. You know, yeah. But when you look at the big, uh, the big picture, there's been a prophecy ahead of time. There's been a prophecy ahead of time by Deborah, and she seized the opportunity. So when I look at that story, I look at Deborah and I look at Jael, and I see two women one well-known, powerful, a prophetess, a judge, a leader in Israel, and a seemingly housewife. You know, when we juxtapose these two personalities, you know, one is way up here, and the other one is just like a housewife, but God used both of them to fulfill his purpose for Israel. Amen. 
So when Jehel saw the opportunity, she was courageous. That's what I'm seeing there. She was courageous. She didn't, you know, think twice. She did what she had to do in that moment. She did what she had to do in that moment, and immediately she ran the nail through the guy to the ground. The battle was over. It was in that moment that she ran the nail to the ground. He died, and the battle was over. And as I was praying, you know, the Holy Spirit said to me, like, you know, how often do we fight a lot of battles in our lives? You know, I, I don't want you to look at the story in the literal sense, but I'm going somewhere. We fight battles every day. This is a typical Bible uh, battle, you know, in the Bible, in the days of the Bible. There are a lot of battles. But I don't want you to look at it just in the literal sense or with the lens of this is just a battle. But we fight battles every day, every now and then. We find different kinds of battle. But Jehel, immediately she ran the tent peg through him. The battle was over. She was courageous. The opportunity came up and she took it. The opportunity came up, she took it. Praise God. So we'll fight battles every day. And what is the most common battle that we fight or we face as children of God is sin. It is sin. It is sin. Self in need. Self in need. If we kill sin in our lives, that's a huge battle we need to win. That is a big battle we need to be courageous to win. Immediately, she ran the ten peg through Sisera. The battle was over. Amen. So a lot of times we fight battles. For some people, the battle we're fighting is the battle of aff affliction, battle, battle of addiction, a lot of things, uh, depression, anxiety, sin, pornography, fornication, adultery, you know, so many things. So I see those things as battles in our lives that we need to nail to the ground. Those are battles we need to nail down to the ground. And immediately, Cicera, um, Jehel took the opportunity and nailed Cicera to the ground, and the battle was over. What battle are you facing in your life? What is that battle you're facing right now? I don't know about it. Maybe it's a scene, you know, secret scene. Nobody knows about it. Could be a scene. And that is what is standing between you and your glorious destiny. Maybe that's what's standing between you and your glorious destiny. There's an opportunity today. That's why you're in church. And you're hearing the word of God today to nail Sisera to the ground. There's an opportunity today, today to nail Sisera to the ground. And whatever that is, affliction could be affliction. You need to be courageous. You need to be courageous, whatever it is. Uh, remember the story of the woman of uh, the woman with the issue of blood in Luke chapter eight, verse forty. If we read all the way down to fifty, that was courage. You know, a lot of times we speak about that story. We often zero in a lot about you know the uncommon faith you know displayed by this woman, but we also need to look at the courage displayed by this woman. The Bible records that there were so many people in the crowd, so many people in the crowd uh, in Capernaum and um, following Jesus. And she was in the crowd, just like any other person. She was in church, just like every other person is in church right now. Everybody's seated, looking at me right now. But our individual, our individual desires and outcries are different. She had a need. I have a need. You have a need. She was courageous. She pressed through the crowd. She pressed through the crowd. That, that's courage. 
She was in the crowd, yet alone. She was among so many people, yet she was alone. She was in church like this, about 30 people seated, yet she was alone. She was alone in a battle. She was alone in that affliction. But she was courageous, and she pressed through the crowd. She pressed through the crowd, and she touched the border of the garment of Jesus. When I looked at the Greek word of touch, it says it's, um, if I can remember right now, the Greek word was uh, hapthu, I can't remember, pardon me. But I think what it means in Greek is actually cling. It's from the Greek word hapto. I could be wrong, uh, but it means cling. So what it means is, you know, a lot of people were around Jesus, so obviously there would be a lot of contact. But it was only one person who touched Jesus. The Bible actually didn't say he touched Jesus or he touched, or she touched Jesus, touched the garment. But something happened in that moment because she was courageous. She stood out of a crowd to fight her own battle, which was affliction. So courage is what I'm trying to bring home and try to encourage somebody this morning. In our battles of life, we need to be courageous. Deborah is an example of everyday woman today. She's a wife, very humble, displayed a high level of humility, yet a leader in Israel. So maybe you're here today, you're the boss at work, you're still a wife at home, and you still, you still operate your gifting in the church. Deborah is an example of, I would say, a contemporary woman as we have today. She operated in those offices excellently, as a prophet, as a wife, and as a judge. And she displayed a high level of courage because his world was going through a difficult time at this time. And she spoke directly to Barak. When Barak kind of, you know, was afraid, she spoke directly to Barak. Praise God. Another story that I can, you know, speak to, I've got a lot of points here, uh, a little bit conscious of time. We can zero in a little bit too, you know, on the story of David and Goliath. There was a lot of courage too displayed by the little boy. And, and a lot of the stories in the Bible, we see how God used the weak people to, you know, if you like, confound the strong man. God uses the similar things that we despise, you know, and use them to bring about his purpose. Here is a housewife. Who would have thought that a housewife, Jehel, would be the one to nail Sisera? That's a housewife but she displayed a lot of courage. So God will often use sometimes the things we don't, you know, we despise. The Bible says he uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wisdom of the wise. He doesn't call the qualified as a common quote like that. It's not in the Bible. God doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the called. But that's exactly what it is. God will look at a weak person and he will use that weak person to bring about his purpose. Example of David is a perfect example. Um, I think uh, the story is in the book of, um, let's go there briefly. Yeah, that's 1 Samuel 17. You know, we'll, bring, we'll look at the story of David and Goliath. That's another very good example of, you know, showing courage in the face of battle, you know. When David saw Goliath, he said to Goliath, who are you uncircumcised Philistine to come against the army of the Lord? Today the Lord will deliver you into my hands. That's a lot of courage to say that. It's a lot of courage to say that. He wasn't afraid. And a very important thing that David did in that story, uh, we don't have to go there, he said to, David reminded himself what the Lord has done for him in the past. Say, the Lord that has done this for me, the Lord that has delivered this into my hands, the Lord will deliver you into my hands today. 
You know, sometimes when we go through battles, we need to remember those victories, those seemingly tiny victories, seemingly tiny victories that God have done for us in the past, those victories when there was no one around, when you were sick and you thought you were dying and God came through for you. Sometimes it would help you to be courageous in the face of battle. A lot of times I go through stuff and I go through them because I know if God has done it before, he can do it again. If he has done it before, he did it yesterday, he can do it today, and he can do it tomorrow. Praise Jesus. So David, in that moment, encouraged himself in the Lord. So courage is a very, I'll call it, a very important ingredient you know, in the face of battle. We look at this text of, you know, Deborah and Jael, and, you know, when I was reading through and I was studying, the thought that kept coming to my mind was courage, courage, courage. Because it's hard to be courageous in the face of battle. Even the guy chickened out, was almost chickened out, Barak. But the woman, the woman, or, yeah, the women in the stories, you know, they were very courageous. Very courageous. It's Mother's Day today, so nothing against the guys. <laughs> yeah. You know, but Deborah was very, very courageous. The woman with the issue of blood pressed in, pressed in through the crowd. She pressed in through the crowd. What, what battle are you facing today? Anxiety. Depression. What is it? God is giving you an opportunity, you are in a crowd right now. You're in church. But God doesn't speak to crowd. He speaks to individuals. And you can not get more of God than you are thirsty for him. The more you get, or the more thirsty you get, the more of God you get. So we can play religion and come to church every Sunday, come to uh, the events during the week and do all of those things. That's great. We're just being religious. If we do not connect, we're not going to get anything. If we don't connect, we're not going to get anything. This was a woman in a crowd. So many people were there with Jesus. I could imagine how many people were trying to get a glimpse of him, pushing him and trying to touch him. But one woman came and connected. Perhaps she wasn't even close enough to grab Jesus. She was just this little bit close to him and grabbed and touched the hem of his garment. And Jesus stood in that moment and said, hang on, guys, someone just touched me. And the disciples were like, come on, come on, come on, like... So many people around here, why would you say someone just touched me? And he said, no, somebody just touched because power just left me. Hallelujah. Someone connected. She was in the crowd, yet she was alone. Because she was courageous to fight a battle. She was courageous to fight a battle. There are a lot of things that God will not do for us, let's face it. Some things we need to do for ourselves. And that part of that has been courageous. God will speak to me. God will speak to you. It will show me visions and it will show you visions. But what God is showing us, the, the physical environment might not look anything like it. And that's where courage has to come in. That if he has said it, he will do it. The Bible says, by two immutable things, it is impossible for God to lie. If he has said it, he will do it. If he has said it, it will come to pass. But a lot of times, the physical environment, the present, is nothing looking like the future. And God sometimes will make us to go through things in the moment because of a glorious future ahead. You know, we say he's an everlasting God, and sometimes God will go right into the future to fix things. Because he knows the hand from the beginning. And in the moment, we're feeling uncomfortable, but he's gone ahead. And that's why it's called the everlasting God. 
from generation to generation is timeless. He created time. Yes, it's not bound by time. So God can launch into my future 30 years to come and he fixes things and he arranges things and I'm feeling uncomfortable about it right now because I don't know. Praise God. As I begin to, you know, tie it all together this morning, I said I don't want to go past 15 minutes. I think I'm already past already. <laughs> um, I want to encourage somebody this morning. You know, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what's going through your mind right now. I don't know what battle you're facing. I don't know what the challenge is for you, but I want you to press in. I want to encourage you to press in. I want to encourage you to press in. Opportunities will show up, but are you ready for it? You have to press in. An opportunity is being in church today. To some of us, we just need to repent. Sin is the greatest battle we fight. Sin is the greatest battle we fight. The Bible says, except a man be born again, he cannot see. He cannot see. He cannot see the kingdom of God. That's where it all starts from. That is where it all starts from. If we don't take sin out of the equation, we haven't even started. And like I said, maybe you're already born again, you're a child of God, but you know, anxiety, depression, you still face a lot of this challenge. We all do, like it's life, let's face it. Things happen, things happen, but we need courage to go through it. If I can have uh, Dr. Tony on the keyboard, uh, as I begin to tie it together, we need courage to go through. The woman pressed through the crowd she tried to touch Jesus, but it was the opposite. She got touched. She tried to touch Jesus, but she got touched. She got her healing. And the battle was over in that moment for her. The battle was over in that moment. The nail was struck to the ground in that moment. She pressed through the thick crowd. I'm going to sing a song while I have him on the keyboard, and I just want you to reflect whatever it is in your life. You call it a battle, you call it a challenge. You don't want it. That's, that's why. We don't want it. We don't want it there. I wanted to release your faith this morning. Just like that woman, she was courageous. She pressed through the crowd. We only get what we expect. We can come to church. We can all pray and sing and say amen and go back the same way we've come. If we don't connect... And guess what? The angels of the Lord are here. The angels of the Lord are here. This is Mount Zion. This is his temple. God is here. If you would launch out this morning in faith, if you would reach out this morning in faith concerning that battle, concerning that battle in your life, you would reach out to God in faith and be courageous and try to connect and try to touch, you will be touched. You will be touched. You will be touched. Mm -hmm. He touched me. Mm -hmm. oh, the joy that fills my soul. Something happened and now I know he touched me and he's made me oh he touched me he touched me and oh what joy the 
fills my soul. Nothing happened, and now I know He touched me and He's made me whole. You're here this morning. Sin is a battle for you. And you want to nail it to the ground. You want to hammer it down to the ground like Jehel did to Sarah. You want to nail it to the ground. I want to pray with you. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, what joy that fills my soul. Something happened, and now I know He touched me and has made me whole. He wants to touch you at that very point of your need. At that very point of your need, He wants to touch you. Don't hold back. At that point of your need, He wants to touch you. He wants to give you the strength, the courage to go through the battle, the courage to nail it to the ground. If you're here this morning and you're hearing me and you want to say, Jesus, I want to connect. It takes courage, I know. Here and say, Jesus, I want to connect. And you want to stretch out. You want to touch the border of his garment. If I can ask that you just put your right hand at the center of your chest, and I'll just say a short prayer with you. It's not about the words that I speak, it's about the miracle that happens when we connect. It's about the miracle that happens when we launch out in faith. Hallelujah. If you can please say these words after me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your son Jesus. Came to this world and died for my sins. And this morning, I confess Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I know he died for my sins. And I confess him as my Lord and Savior. Today I ask that you will be my Lord and Savior, and I declare that I am born again. Thank you, Jesus. If you can just say amen as I pray. Heavenly Father, your word says nobody comes to you and you turn away. For everyone that has genuinely said those words to you, This morning, Jesus, I ask that you would come into their lives, transform their lives, be their Lord and Savior, write their names in the book of life, and let them not be a castaway at the end. Jesus, be glorified in their lives, and let their lives be a testimony of your grace, of your goodness. In Jesus' name. And as I wrap up, you're here this morning, whatever the challenge is, I don't know. I face battles, you face battles, I don't know. But you need somebody to join faith with you this morning. I want us to pray together. Whatever the challenge is, whatever the battle is, you just need somebody to hold hands with you this morning and agree with you on it. Whatever it is, I'll ask that you step forward in faith. Whatever it is, if I can ask, and I'll ask the leaders to come pray with you as well, and just hold your hands. Whatever it is this morning, 
Hello, is it it's anxiety, whatever it is, I don't know, but you just you want somebody to hold your hands and pray with you. I invite you to come forward and I can ask the leaders to pray with you as we tie it all together. Mm-hmm. Oh, he touched me. He touched me. And oh, what joy the fuse my soul. Something happened and now I know he touched me he's made me oh oh he touched me oh he touched me shut up and oh what joy the fills my soul Something happened, and now I just want a confirmation that that's what God wants from us. He touch me, he touch me, he touch me, and oh, what joy the fills my soul! Something happened, and now I know. Touch me, is made me whole. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you for your word that has gone forth. We thank you for the many miracles that are already happening right now. Thank you for the ones that are happening and the ones that would happen in the course of a week. Thank you for your angels that are here this morning. Thank you for the many revelations that would happen in the course of this week. Thank you for the many people that you will speak to this week. Thank you for the angelic ministration that we enjoy this week. Thank you, Lord, for the battles that has been won against depression. Thank you for the battle that has been won against sin. Thank you for the battle that has been won against anxiety. We give you praise, Jesus. We give you praise, Jesus. We recognize you as the doer of all these things. We recognize you as the doer of all these things. And we ask that your name be glorified. As your people, as your children go this week, we ask, Lord, that your power and presence will go with us. Moses said, if your presence does not go with us, don't take us any farther. For wherein shall we be distinguished from all the other people on the face of the earth if your presence does not go with us? Jesus, we ask for your presence to go with us this week. 
do mighty things in our lives this week and let your name be glorified. We give you praise. We give you praise, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise, Jesus, because we've prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Because we've prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Okay, I don't think we have any announcement for there. So have a beautiful, beautiful week. Happy Mother's Day. Enjoy today with family and uh, let's have some fun.